thank you very much for this invitation uh, uh, to talk to you today and also to participate in this uh, seminar. Let me put that in context and take you back four years ago. I am at the University of Melbourne, but I have worked in mortality data for four decades, working on the Global Burden of Disease Study and, uh, and many other global initiatives at the World Health Organization and uh, more recently in Australia. And the more that we work with the data, the more problems we see that countries have, particularly with causes of death and vital statistics. Michael Bloomberg, the mayor of New York City, or ex-mayor of New York City, very wealthy philanthropist. But more importantly, a man who used cause of death data to influence public policies in New York City to control tobacco, to reduce these big sugary drinks that Americans love, and did very many good things for public health. But he did those things based on data. He said, I know where the problems are. I know what to do. I just need to get people to help me to do it. And he knew that because he had good quality cause of death data. And so Mr. Bloomberg asked me whether I would direct a new initiative called the Bloomberg Data for Health Initiative from the University of Melbourne. And we agreed we would work in 20 countries. Pick 20 countries in the world where he said to me, the interventions that you can bring to those countries, the technical support that you can bring to those countries will make a big difference in the quality of the cause of death and mortality data. He was not interested so much in fertility and birth data, but he understood the value of good quality mortality and cause of death statistics. Why is Peru part of this initiative? Peru is there because you had already started significant reforms. I knew this because I have access, like many others, to your data. I knew what you were doing. And you were on a pathway to really improving the quality of your data four years ago. So I sat with Dr. Fatima Marinho from Brazil. I just met Juan. And I said, what would you like to do in Brazil, in Peru, in Ecuador, and in Colombia? What are the challenges? And so we sat together and we derived a list of interventions. Since then, Dr. Juan Cortez has been the technical director for the program in Peru. We choose local technical experts and they are the people who implement the program. And we know that they are very good and that they will implement the program to the right technical specifications. This program is a major reformation, a reformation of mortality statistics in your country. We asked you to do a lot of things, not easy things. We asked you to work together, your statistical agencies, your Ministry of Health, your registration offices, your local government departments. You all have to work together. It was not there four years ago when I first came, but it is there now. And, and you have done remarkably well to build that collaboration. The other thing I want to just finish this introduction on is to say how pleased we are to see the local ownership. You own these data, not the University of Melbourne, not WHO or PAHO. You own these data. These are your data. These are data that are there to guide and inform public health policy in Peru and in the sub-districts of Peru. Not for WHO, not for anything else. Those are side benefits. You own the data. You are the custodians of the data. It is for your benefit 
that the data are being improved. Yes, there is still more to do. You are only registering 80%, 8 in 10, of the deaths. Australia registers 10 in 10. You still need to improve your death registration. You still have, as we saw in the slide Gladys proposed, uh, showed us, a lot of garbage coding. Garbage codes are those causes of death that you should not have in your cause of death data system. Senility, ill-defined, septicemia, uh, heart failure, and so on. These are not useful for policy. Septicemia is not an underlying cause of death. You have an underlying cause like lung cancer or stroke eventually can lead to septicemia in hospital and the patient dies. Public health wants to prevent the lung cancer. What doctors write as the underlying cause of death is added up and becomes the 180,000 data tabulation for Peru. If they write rubbish on the underlying cause of death every time, you will have rubbish in your public health statistics. You will not have good quality cause of death data for the Ministry of Health, the sub-districts of Peru to say we are having a problem with lung cancer, road traffic accidents, HIV, opioid, whatever it is. That is what cause of death data does. It holds governments accountable to improve premature mortality or reduce premature mortality by using good quality data. You have to improve that. But you are taking the right steps to, to meet these challenges. What I want to do now is take a step back and place Peru in the global perspective. Good quality cause of statistics are among the hardest data a country can generate. And that's why they've been poor for so long. Because countries have improved their economic statistics, they've improved their trade statistics, but they've had a lot, they've improved their birth statistics. But good quality cause of death data is the last thing to improve because it is hard to do. But you are doing it, and that is one of the aims of the Bloomberg project. You can develop key health indicators nationally and particularly subnationally. You are all monitoring the sustainable development goals. How will you do that in Peru? How will you be honest about the advances in sustainable development goals if you do not have good quality cause of death data? Because half of the sustainable development goals relate to cause of death data, if you go and have a look at them. You can generate reliable and timely information, reliable and timely, the two key axes of any cause of death system. Do I believe the data? Are they accurate? Are they reliable? Are the data for last year, this year or 20 years ago or 10 years ago? Data for 10 years ago are very little uh, relevance for public policy in countries today. They have to be timely. Uh, they guide resource allocation. This is important in all countries, but particularly in countries such as Peru, where you have the main causes of child mortality declining rapidly, but still important, and the main causes of adult mortality increasing rapidly and becoming more and more important. This is a challenge for health, public health policy makers everywhere. What should I do? You need these data to guide you, to identify health inequalities, uh, provide information on emerging health problems like HIV and so on, uh, and to monitor and uh, evaluate the effectiveness of your health policies and programs. Health systems are required to do many things. But if you ask me what is the single most important responsibility of the Peruvian health system, it is to keep Peruvians alive in good health to old age. And to do that, you need to avoid premature deaths. And premature deaths require cause-specific information because they're cause-specific. Lung cancer, traffic accidents, HIV, measles, malaria, they're all requiring uh, different interventions. Even the many forms of cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, stomach cancer, colorectal cancer, all have different prevention strategies. So we need to know the data accurately for those 
specific causes. Debates about resource allocation and prevention need to be informed by evidence about the comparative importance, the comparative importance of large avoidable causes of death and how they are changing. That is the main function of a good quality cause of death system. So I've said this earlier but let me summarise. Why are we spending so much effort in Bloomberg trying to assist countries to improve the quality of their cause of death data? Policy in Peru and elsewhere should be informed by those two important aspects, reliable and up-to-date cause of death data. But the availability of data, as we'll see in a moment, does not ensure quality. Just because the data come from the main hospitals in Peru does not mean they are correct. It does not mean that the doctors are certifying the deaths correctly and being of value for public health. So poor quality data leads to poor decisions. I'll just see if I can get the pointer on this. There we are, thank you. Poor quality data leads to, can lead to poor health decisions and those decisions can mean poor allocation of resources and lost opportunities to improve population health. Year after year after year after year, you invest millions, perhaps billions, of soles, or in case of Thailand, Thai baht, or in other countries, pesos or dollars. You invest those money in the routine maintenance of your cause of death data system. But are those data fit for purpose? Are you getting value for money from those routine investments that cost so much money to countries? They're very good at registering all the deaths, almost all the deaths in Peru. But 40%, four in 10, the death certificate says, I don't know what this person died from. Ill-defined causes of absolutely no value, no value whatsoever for public health planning. And I've done research also in the Philippines. I took gold standard diagnoses. This time it was 1,055 deaths in this big regional hospital, outside, well outside of Manila, in the countryside. I went back and recoded with my team all the causes of death based on clinical records and I compared them with what the doctors in the hospital diagnosed as the cause of death. The overall accuracy of death certification was 65%. One in three of the deaths in this hospital were misdiagnosed by the doctors. And that is a very typical finding. Typically, doctors are getting between about 30 to 70% 30 to 70 percent of deaths in hospital, the doctors are getting wrong. And that is a tremendously lost opportunity for improving the database for countries because countries expect data to come from hospitals as being correct. If they are incorrect, countries have very little basis on which to base their health policies and planning. And so this was one of the key uh, reasons why the Bloomberg Initiative focused on improving the data diagnostic accuracy in hospitals. Some years ago some colleagues and I developed what we call the Vital Statistics Performance Index. The Vital Statistics Performance Index, by the way, is the last step in Anaconda. And Anaconda is a tool that we've developed at the University of Melbourne. It exists in Spanish and Javier uh, helped us some years ago to train people from Brazil in, in depth in the application of Anaconda. And it's wonderful to see. It's a tool that identifies problems de in detail in the cause of death data of countries. And we have run, um, uh, the last step in Anaconda is the Vital Statistics Performance Index. It gives you a summary overview score, a summary score of the quality of your mortality statistics database. And it looks at six dimensions of quality. How complete are your data? The statistical agency says about 80% of deaths in Peru are registered. And it's come up, did you notice how nicely it's come up since 2012 from about 70%. You are doing the right thing. You are making progress. But you still have 20% 
two in ten deaths in this country are not entering into the death registration system. Hopefully Synodec will change that. But completeness of death reporting is probably the most important dimension of data quality. If you have low completeness of reporting, then your data are going to be seriously biased because the causes of death in the population not recorded will be different to the causes of death in the population recorded. The second dimension we talk about is the quality of cause of death reporting, the garbage coding. The third dimension is the level of cause specific detail. For your Ministry of Health to benefit from the cause of death data, it needs detailed information. It doesn't just need all cancer. It needs cancers by 20 sites. It needs detailed information on the pathology of pneumonia, di uh, diarrhea, uh, stroke and so on. Internal consistency, in other words, um, is the, 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 the avoidance of um, biological implausibility. Do not have male pregnancy deaths. Do not have female prostate cancer deaths and so on. The quality of age and sex reporting. It is very useful for public health even if it doesn't know the cause of death. If it knows the age and sex pattern of mortality, we can do a lot with that information, but it needs to be accurate. You cannot have people 45 saying, oh, oh my father, sorry, someone saying my father who died at 45 was actually 85. That will not help Peru to avoid those premature deaths at age 45. And in many countries we see that very bad age reporting. And then finally, data availability and timeliness. We saw Peru has data for 2016. So you're in 2018, you're about to go in 2019, you don't want to be planning on cause of death data for three, four, five years ago. But you do quite well. Um, having 2016 data available in 2018 is the international standard, 18 months. So we measure that. And so we measure these five variables for every country and we come up with a graph that looks like this. This is work published by Lena Mickelson and colleagues in The Lancet. It shows this, the Vital Statistics Performance Index anywhere between 2005 to 2012. Uh, we took the best year, the best score for every country and we put it on the map. And here's Peru. And you can see Peru scored between 50 and 70 percent. This was data up to 2012. Now remember since 2012 Peru has increased dramatically. I want countries to be either uh, high, that is 70 to 85 percent, or very high like Australia, 85 to 100 percent. You can see uh, America, Canada, Mexico, Venezuela. There are countries in this region who have already very high quality. Brazil had um, high, but it was 84%, just below the very high category. Now Brazil is in the very high category. And I am sure that Peru has now moved from high to very high. I don't know whether you have moved, um, sorry, high to very high, I, I don't know whether you've moved into the top part of the very high, but I'm sure if we do this graph again, what I've seen today, uh, and we will do this graph again at the end of the Bloomberg period, we will see Peru in blue as well. And then you must stay in blue. You must continue those in wonderful investments that you have made in quality of causes of death, because they're the right investments in order to improve data quality. One of the things that is a, a worry of Peru is the fraction of deaths due to garbage codes. Now this was done by my colleague Dr. Rafael Lozano uh, uh, when he was um, doing the GBD about five years ago. So it's very old. It's the, since 2000, all the country years of data, what's the average fraction of garbage codes? And in, in Peru, about half of all the deaths, like in Thailand, like in Oman, like in Egypt, half of the deaths were coded to garbage codes. I, we need to redraw this map because I'm almost certain with the work that Janet, Javier and others are doing now that we would have much lower fraction. But you can see the challenge 
the cause of death data quality in Peru has been very high. Poor medical record certification by doctors um, in health facilities. You're aware of that. Doctors, up until now, in almost all countries, have been very lazy about completing the death certificate accuracy. Why? It's because they do not understand, doctors do not understand the critical public health importance of correctly certifying a cause of death. Once a doctor has certified a death correctly, that's not the end. It doesn't then go into um, cause of death statistics. A coder has to take that certificate and correctly apply the rules of the International Classification of Diseases in order to get the correct underlying cause. So that coda needs to be trained. And uh, in, Brazil, uh, in Brazil, but also here, I'm pleased to see in Peru, you are minimizing that coda variation because different coders think differently. They're trained differently. By using IRIS, you get a standardized, automated solution to coding the correct cause of death. Now, as we saw, in, and Janet, I think Janet or Gladys showed us, at 70 percent you get work, 30 percent you still need to do manual coding, just because the algorithm can't distinguish the correct cause of death from the death certificate for a number of reasons. Uh, and so we still need to make sure that manual coders are well trained, as we have been doing here in um, Peru. Um, the, the issue of lay personnel to determine the cause of death for home deaths. In Peru, I don't know the fraction, but I'm sure a third to 50% of deaths probably occur outside of hospitals. And how do we get the correct cause of death? That's this technique called verbal autopsy. A verbal autopsy uh, is when we go to the family of the deceased and we have one of these. We ask questions for maximum 20 minutes. We apply it through an artificial intelligence uh, algorithm and it diagnoses the cause of death more accurately than doctors do. So computers are actually very smart and they're standardized and they're cheap and all you need is one of these. Verbal autopsy is a fundamentally important component of a modern day civil registration and vital statistics system. You cannot, com you cannot get reasonably useful data on home deaths without verbal autopsy. We realized that there's insufficient capacity in countries to critically appraise cause of death data sets. You, people in Peru would, or in other countries would look at data sets and say, well, we think it's telling us this, but we're not sure. We know there's a lot of problems. And so what we've done is build this tool called Anaconda, and we now have a new tool called Anaconda Plus. It's actually a course built on Anaconda that builds that critical data analysis capacity in countries. And we're delighted that uh, Javier and colleagues uh, made sure that Peru benefited from that uh, technology. But for deaths, this disinterest by the population due to perceived absence of benefit. People understand why you need to register a birth for a number of reasons. People don't understand in many countries why you need to register, notify, register and correctly certify a cause of death. We understand it, but the population often doesn't and that's why they don't notify and register the death. And that's the, that is a big, big challenge for us. Um, in many countries, I don't think it's the case here, a lack of registration facilities. Perhaps in the more remote areas of Peru, you could strengthen the, um, the, the techniques and use a bit more technology uh, advances in technology for the notification and registration of deaths, and that's where Synodef will come in. The, in many countries, the poor coordination between the health, statistical, and registration sectors don't talk to each other, don't cooperate, do repeat, duplicate the same tasks. One, the statistical agency registers deaths, the Ministry of Health registers deaths. You're wasting resources. And part of what we have been trying to do in Bloomberg is to ra get countries to rationalize those functions uh, in, for the benefit of their um, systems. And then finally, a lack of strategic thinking in many countries about how to use IT advances for deaths in communities. 
That's not the case in Peru. Sinodef is a wonderful example of a country overcoming this inertia about using IT advances. You are doing it. Maybe you can do more of it, but you are on the right path to resolving that particular challenge. So this is why the Bloomberg Data for Health initiative was, was there. We, we recognised that the key challenges for data quality were incomplete registration of deaths, poor certification, poor availability, poor use of the data in countries. If you don't use data, you will not understand their problems, but more importantly, you will not understand their value. And so we wanted to promote the use of data by the uh, application of these simple tools like Anaconda and Anaconda Plus. And then particularly among the medical profession, poor understanding of the true policy value of reliable and accurate birth, death and cause of death data. And so what can you do about it? For deaths that occur in hospital, train doctors, train doctors and train doctors again in correctly certifying the cause of death using the WHO standards. Doctors are clever, but they are also very busy. And so like Janet is showing us, using apps, using clever methods, using methods that won't take a lot of their time, but also take enough of their time. We've seen that when you train doctors for an hour, maybe that's not enough. You can see as more and more and more deaths occur in hospitals, that if you're not attacking the correct certification of causes of death, your data quality is not going to improve. Introducing the into cause of death certification into medical school curricula. This is happening in many countries. I think it's also happening here. For deaths that occur outside of hospitals with limited health care, apply what we call the automated verbal autopsy method. And then the enormous potential uh, to improve cause of death data quality uh, when combined with IT advances. This whole idea about verbal autopsy, for example, or even apps for doc training doctors, didn't exist before these things existed. So this is the technology to be using for us to take these advances in research and bring them together with advances in information technology because we're at, we are living through an age when this is possible. 20 years ago, I couldn't stand here and say this is an exciting time to be improving cause of death data systems. Now I can because we have the technology, we have the research knowledge and we now have large um, uh, funders like Bloomberg and the Australian government interested in supporting countries on this journey. What you're doing is the right thing. You are on a pathway to greatness. You are reforming your system exactly the way you should be and you are seeing progress. Please do not stop. Please do not stop. The public health value for the population of Peru by the government having and acting on information about what is killing people is of inestimable value and congratulations on your role in it.